Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Displace Yinzer's Beer Reviews. Um, I've been drinking craft beer for probably about 12 years now, and I've been watching a lot of YouTube reviews, and I, I've, I found them more insightful than a lot of uh, untapped or beer advocate reviews, just because it, it's a lot easier to get people's impressions on a video than it is from just reading reviews online, so I figured I would start my own page. Um, I lived in Pittsburgh for about 30 years, and I just moved, recently moved to North Carolina, hence the the name Displace Yinzer. Um, I've noticed the craft beer scene here is a lot different than Pittsburgh. I wouldn't say it's better or worse, it's just a lot different. So I, I, I found a new respect for living in a different scene and um, having to appreciate that, so I decided to kind of start out fresh and start rating the the beers that were available in the North Carolina area and also um, I have a lot of friends in Pittsburgh still and my family's there so there'll be a lot of Pittsburgh uh, ratings on here as well and also just things I get in trades from throughout the country and wherever else so um, I hope you guys enjoy and take some uh, insightful notes on the things I have to say about these beers so let's get into it this first beer is from uh, Dugis, Dugis, I'm not sure exactly how it's uh, said. Swedish brewery, but it's a collaboration with Stillwater. I'm pretty uh, familiar with Stillwater. They're, to me, they're very hit or miss. Uh, a lot a lot of their things are... I don't really know how to say it, but some of them are great. Some of them are very, very bland in the middle of the road. Um, so it, it all depends on what it is. I never, I wouldn't necessarily say I've had a bad beer from Stillwater, but I've... Uh, I don't have that much faith in them where every time I see one I would buy it because I hadn't had it before, but I did see someone on a group that I'm in say that this beer is fantastic, and I also looked up on some ratings on different websites and uh, untapped and just people comments on Facebook, and they all said that this beer is great, so since I knew it was available locally, I figured I'd pick one up and uh, try it out, and it'll be the first beer for this page, and hopefully there'll be a lot more after this, so... I'll uh, crack this open and see what we got. <clears throat> so, I'm sitting probably about 8 inches from this, and I already smell the passion fruit from this, which is pretty crazy, because... I, I just didn't expect it to be that fruit forward, but from reading the reviews, uh, it sounded like it was, but I just don't necessarily believe other people's comments on that. Sometimes I think they over-exaggerate and everything, but I, I really did. As soon as I was pouring it, I could smell the um, the passion fruit, and the, the look on it is a little, um, I'll, I'll say a little disappointing. I expected it to be a little more carbonated. Um, I'm hoping that the body's not thin because of that, but... The haze is is fine. I have no problem with that, but it's a little disappointing that there wasn't more carbonation. Maybe it was also the way I poured it. Um, so I'm going to take a sniff and see what it smells like. <clears throat> um, yeah, that that is straight fruit juice. Um, it doesn't it doesn't have much oaky character at all. It's certainly not what I would. If I smelled it and I didn't know what it was, I wouldn't necessarily assume that it was even a sour beer. Um, it doesn't really have any of that um, lactic or acetic character to it. It has a little bit of like a skin character that might be from wild yeast maybe, but it's definitely mango and peach is the biggest. And then maybe a little bit of more tropical like the passion fruit which is in it. That could just be, be me reading the label as well, so I don't know. Let's Let's see what it tastes like though. Wow. I... That's crazy. So the carbonation is a, a little lacking, which I was ex I was expecting from the pour. Um, and it, I wish it was a little more tart. It would come across as more of an actual wild ale, but there is a little tartness. Um... Part of that might just be from the fruit, though. It is it is hard to tell that that would actually be from lacto. It does say that, that it's uh, fermented with lacto, though. It is... 
it, it's not like those crazy fruit smoothie beers in in that sense where it it seems like you're actually drinking juice, but it is excuse me, one of the most fruit forward beers that I've ever ever had. But it still has a nice grainy quality to it that makes you know that you're still drinking beer and you're not just drinking fruit juice. Um, the pe peach, I would say, is definitely the strongest flavor of, of any of them, but I can tell that it's not just peach. There's there's something else there. Um, it's def probably more peach and mango. Um, passion fruit is a very distinct taste that I'm getting a tiny bit of, but not a ton of, which I think is probably actually a good thing in this sense, because if there was a ton of passion fruit, it would probably be even even sweeter, which isn't necessarily what I'm looking for in a, uh, a wild ale. Um, I'm going to go into this again. There is a little bit of that, um, that weedy, yeasty, like, burnt hair hair salon character that I get from certain wheat yeasty beers. Um, it, it's not necessarily detrimental to the beer. I think it's just something that I pick up from those types of beers, and it, it's also very mild, so I, I wouldn't really be concerned about that, but it, it's just an attribute to the beer. Um, the peach... The peach is crazy in this. It's it's not quite to the level of like a New Glarus um, peach. It it's definitely different than like the very sour peach beers as well because it doesn't have that. It's uh, a natural sweet peach character and definitely a little bit of mango as well. Those are the two predominant flavors. Passion fruit I think is in the background, but it's there. I I know that there's so many beers that people who love beer think that non-beer drinkers will like, especially fruit beers. And when they give it to them, they're like, well, I get it, it's fruity, but it still tastes like beer. I don't really like this, or it's too sour, too funky, too weird. And that happens to me a lot as well. And this, I don't, I don't think that is the case with this. I think this beer... If you gave this to any single person, would say, "Wow, that is." If as long as they like those fruits, they would say, "Wow, that is a really, really tasty drink." Um, it, like I said, I, I do like that it does have a grainy character to it because if it didn't, I would almost feel like it was straight fruit juice. And I know before I was saying I would like it to be a little more acidic, but if I if it was a little more. It, might be make me think that it was more beer like but it's because it's not that acidic it's actually very very drinkable like i i'm just talking because i'm doing this review but i could have drank in this glass in two minutes i mean it now that i'm smelling it it's actually more of a nectarine than a peach which i Obviously, it's just coming from my head because I know it's not. There's not nectarines in this beer. It is peaches, but it's just it's just peach skin and tropical character. And I excuse me, but it's not like those flavors from hops. It is straight those fruits, but it's not to the point where it's juice either. Um, I can honestly say that I'm. I don't know that I've ever had a beer that tasted like this. It's not to say that this is the best beer in the world or it's like the craziest unique thing. I just, I don't know that I've ever had something that was so fruit forward but not that sour but not like fake sweetness either. Um, it's, it's just really unique and I'm glad that people were saying that it was good and I'm glad that I tried it. It's uh, something that I would probably, if I saw it again, I would probably buy one. Um, I, I mean, I can right now. It's down the street for $7 a bottle. So uh, I'll probably buy a couple extra to, to share with people who haven't had it. Um, it's not something that I would drink every day or want to have a lot of. But it when you read the label and you see that it says 
Tropic Punch Ale. I mean that that's exactly what you're getting. It's not it's not like that cherry fruit punch berry taste, but it's tropical fruits in a glass, not too tart, so it's very very approachable. Um I I I don't know what to say. I'm not Usually something doesn't... A lot of things don't necessarily live up to the hype from what I hear from them. And this certainly lived up the hype. I don't know that it's even... It's better than the hype, but it's definitely more unique than I was expecting from the hype. It's, um... It's, it's, it's fruit in a glass with a little bit of tartness and a little bit of a grainy beer character. Uh, it's, it's crazy drinkable. Um, so if... If you get this in your area, I don't know what the distribution is. I'm assuming it's probably similar to what Stillwater's distribution is, which is, I, I believe, pretty wide. So if you see this, um, I would certainly recommend picking it up. Uh, so it's $7 a bottle, which isn't crazy cheap, but it's not that expensive. It's certainly worth a try. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed my first review, and uh, I'll be looking forward to posting some more. Thanks. Bye.